Hello, welcome. Today, you're my guest. There's no one here. <laughs> if you're watching from the future, this is Thursday, March 19th, 2020. And that date is significant because we're in the grips of a pandemic, COVID-19. If you're watching from the future, then you know better than me what's happened, what devastation it's caused. And without sounding overly dramatic, I'm very worried. <clears throat> As I cough there, ironically, hopefully coincidentally. Um, but if I talk about the worry I have for my loved ones, I'm sure you have the same feelings and that isn't going to do us that much good to worry, to, to get anxious. What is, is action. And listen, I'm not a medical expert. I'm not an immunologist. I don't, uh, really understand how viruses work. But what I do know is the effects it's been having on the world and the effects it might have soon in the next couple of weeks where I live here in Dublin, Ireland. Now, in fairness, I think the Irish people have been brilliant in how they've responded to this. I think they've been very proactive and they've really come together. And it, it's, it's, which is really encouraging. <clears throat> By the way, I had a sore throat about three weeks ago, um, uh, after speaking a lot when I did a teacher training. So I'm hoping I don't have coronavirus, but time will tell. So although the, the country's reaction has been great in general, let me tell you what I'm doing. I am staying indoors. I'm only going out for groceries. I'm only going out for to go to the pharmacy. It's just myself, Rach, and our dog Alfie. Not meeting anyone. When, like a couple of weeks ago, when this uh, first uh, took momentum in Ireland, uh, slightly before that, I knew this was something quite serious. Um, because I used to live in South Korea and I seen I was keeping a close eye on what was happening there. And although the generally the country's been great to respond to this, there still are some people that just are still meeting friends, going to um, shared spaces with people that uh, they don't see day in day out. And for me, this is this is madness. I I, I get I think humor is really important. I think that in times of crisis, like if you like in uh, a man's search for meaning, uh, Victor Frankl talks about in the concentration camps, the prisoners would often have this uh, humor between this banter, this quite dark humor to get them through. So I think humor is great and I love having a laugh. But, you know, if I see another meme about COVID, um, it'll be one to too many. I think we're going to look back on this in, in, even in a week's time, a couple of weeks, and think, wow, we were really naive here. We were very, maybe overly optimistic or maybe just misinformed because it is hard to know who to listen to, who to trust. And I'm not someone to listen to. I'll say that out right now in terms of advice. I'm just telling you what I'm doing or more importantly, not doing. And when uh, we see people talking about managing stress, this is, look, I said it from the start, this is really important that we don't uh, stress and worry unnecessarily because that's not going to do any good. But equally, when people post up inspirational quotes on Instagram and then go out and you see them with their friends socialising on their stories, like, what are you doing? really like you can give all the inspirational quotes that you like and tell people to use oil of oregano or essential oils but science doesn't give a shit about that 
Viruses don't care about that. What they care about is what distance you are from someone who's infected, how and when you, you, you wash your hands, if you touch your face. That's what it cares about. And as we know, this virus is high, highly contagious. So be really careful who you listen to. I mean, I've seen a chap, um, this uh, yoga teacher, international yoga teacher, talking on Instagram, talking about how he wasn't bothered about this virus until his workshop was cancelled. And now it's become oh so real. And in his post, it says, look, I'm not a doctor, but I do know that lemon is a great antiviral remedy and good nutrition can help boost the immune system and, and all this type of stuff. And that that was all great, but it, it I think that's dangerous giving that advice because it makes us think that, oh, if we eat our greens, everything's going to be okay. But it's not. And I, as I said, I don't know what the future holds. I have absolutely no clue. Um, actually, on the on the Wall Street Journal, which you have to pay for, which is fair enough. I mean, good journalism should be rewarded. They have an article which talks about a hundred. It's actually so I can read it to you. It is day one hundred seventy three of the coronavirus epidemic in the US. Your office never reopened, and you do your client calls online. Your spouse is tutoring SAT students from the desktop in the living room. Your kids are in the backyard making tie-dye t-shirts at the virtual summer camp. The coronavirus didn't fade, but you're used to it now. It's normal. So that becomes normal life. And there seems to be a big push towards people moving online and doing more video content. And I think this is brilliant. I, I It's really um, admirable that people... Uh, especially if you've got very little technical skills and we all started somewhere, uh, get out their phone and put themselves out there, even though they feel uncomfortable doing that. I really admire that. That's fantastic. And I, I don't think that is going to be ever replace human contact face to face, but it's clearly going to be a lot more prevalent and um, important to us as self-employed people going forward. As I mentioned in podcast number 90, I think it was, when I talked about my new beginnings, I have been wanting to move more and more of my teachings online because I realized that this is the future. I used to work for an AI company. That means that I, under <laughs> I don't understand, but I have an idea as to um, the momentum of technology and how... We can either push it to one side and say, oh, technology is bad, or we can integrate it into our life. And there, there are, uh, some of us struggle with anxiety and struggle with worry, and this is a modern struggle. But the reality, in my opinion, is the social media isn't the problem. Your mindset is the problem. Alcohol isn't bad. It's why are we drinking? Why do we take drugs if we take drugs? Why do we overeat if we overeat? It's not the actual drug, the food, the technology itself. I don't earn any income now. My income is zero. And at the moment, that's the least of my concerns. My main concern is Rach and Alf, oh, well, I mean Alpha, yes, okay, but they're not nearly on the same level. Obviously, I, I care about Rach and our family, and my mom and dad as well. And, um, but what can I do? What, what, what I think what I can do is, uh, what the, what I'm currently practicing is social distancing, and uh, staying indoors. But after that, let's look forward. What's going to happen in a month's time, in six months' time? Where are we going to be? This, the thing is, this is only going to be more and more common, these diseases, these viral infections, these epidemics, these pandemics. Uh, and 
there's actually a great speech by Bill Gates, who just recently left Microsoft to um, become a full-time philanthropist. And four years ago, he did a TED Talk saying the biggest danger that we're not ready for. Something like that. It's, fan it's fantastic. Um, and he predicted four years ago the next thing to really affect civilization is a pandemic, a virus. And it's actually spooky to watch. Bill Gates was saying that these are only become, become a, going to become more common because we're getting more populated. As you know, these, or you may or may not know by now, this virus started in a wet market in China. And where a wet market is when you have many different types of wild animals and they are stacked upon each other. So therefore, if blood, pus, urine, feces come from one, they go down to the others and they infect the others. And the animals of such different species are not supposed to be cohabiting, as you call that cohabiting, in such close proximity. So this is only... The, listen, some people are starving in the world. We know this. We have it, we have it good where we are, depending on where you're listening to this. But in Dublin and Ireland, we got it good. So we, it's very, it's unfair of us to say, well, you shouldn't behave this way. You shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't burn the rainforests. Okay, I understand the argument for that to, to a degree, but you're not the poor farmer who's trying to feed his family. Now, I'm not saying, obviously some of it was done for commercial gain. A lot of it's done for commercial gain. But we have to remember that there's a story behind every action, however we view it, good or bad. And as the world grows in population, we're going to need more food. And this is only going to encourage more of these wet market scenarios. So these pandemics are going to be, you know, at one stage they were once in a lifetime. Now we might see them more regular. So to be ready for that and to understand that although technology can have its drawbacks, if we learn how to integrate it, if we learn how to understand, how to use it, it can really help us. My intention is to produce really high quality audio visual experiences so that when I have a class that you can join, you will feel like you're in the class. It will be the highest quality available because it, like I said, it's great everyone doing these streams. That's fantastic. But going forward, for me, that's that's not going to work. I need because I want to <laughs> look. I'm about to become a dad, a father, and um, I need to make money, pay a mortgage. I'm the breadwinner. Um, that doesn't mean I'm better than anyone else. It just means that's my role. And um, like us all, we have our our, our livelihoods. Um, and I realize how vulnerable we are now to things like this crisis that we're in. So what I plan to do is launch a platform which is paid for at a very reasonable rate where you can access high, quali high quality content. So that can be everything from podcasts to one-on-one -on -one coaching to teacher training to four 60 minute classes workshops i mean the the options really are endless i'd be interested to hear what what you think what type of content would you value and uh i i'm excited i'm actually <laughs> obviously this is a terrible situation and i'm yeah but i'm it's given me a kick up the backside and give me time to start to understand how this technology works. And, um, you know, when I worked for this AI company, I wasn't a, 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 uh, an engineer. I helped to run the company itself. I was a people person. Recruitment, uh, management, coordination. Um, so COO was my title. Chief Operating Officer. <laughs> yeah, so sounds fancy, but... Uh, and... Um, but I, when I seen when I worked in such close quarters with people who 
we're essentially developing machines to think like humans. I thought, wow, this is this is the, there's no reversing this. If you look at Tesla, what's the chap his name from Tesla? Elon Musk. His interview on the Joe Rogan experience where he talks about AI is frightening. It's like something out of a apocalyptic movie. Let me take a sip, sorry. So we have two choices, love or fear. Be afraid of the technology or love it, embrace it, integrate it. I mean, I'm speaking to my mum now more than ever. I'm video calling her every day. I gave her my old iPhone, so she now has a smartphone. She uses WhatsApp. And uh, yeah, it's been pretty good. <laughs> I mean, given the situation, because we can't just moan about, we're still going to do is no good moan about the situation. We just have to make the best of it. But yeah, it's, I mean, look at, look at Italy, look at Spain, look at what's happening now in France. And, uh, it, well, I went out to the Phoenix Park today, which is great. Me, Rach and Alfie went out, had a walk around. But uh, I think that's a luxury you won't have in a week, a couple of weeks. I think it'd be complete lockdown, army on the street, police out there. I really hope I'm wrong, um, but I don't think so. I do think it is interesting how it's going to change society and how it's going to change how we work, how we communicate, how we spend our leisure time. Um, and, you know, let, let, again, let's try to look at the positives. I think that when you, un when you understand technology and it's a constant learning curve that we are all going through, it does give you a lot of freedom. I mean, I have been sacked from many jobs. <laughs> it's funny how when you look back on your life, you look back with rose tinted glasses. And you think, oh, I was only sacked for one, two jobs. I was sacked for a f from a few, just from being incompetent, not caring, and um, often talking too much to, to my colleagues and just messing around, basically. Um, and I think that was because I, I well, it doesn't, it doesn't matter why that was. But I, what I realized is that when you work for yourself, you have technology. The downside is you lose your internet connection and you're buggered. But if you work uh, directly for someone else, you can get fired at any stage. And um, I mean, that's not to say no man is an island, no human is an island. I mean, the people I'm working with, I mean, the space between Yoga Hub, they've been amazing. They've been fantastic. And um, the way they've handled this has been incredible. And it's really important to have alliances. So important. Um, those are two, for me, I, I'm proud to be associated with those two companies because um, they really act with a lot of integrity. But we are becoming more individ individualistic we are, and I think the, the although it, human connections are really important, it's also very important to understand uh, how to use the tools uh, that we have. I'm waffling a little bit. I actually made some notes. Um, yeah, I've, pre I've pretty much said, said a lot of them. You know, I don't know if you watched Leo, I actually can't pronounce his surname, Leo, the president, the... Um, the leader of Ireland, the Taoiseach. And he said, this is the calm before the storm. That gave me chills when he said that. It was a Paddy, St. Patrick's Day announcement. It was a phenomenal speech. He actually quoted kind of, uh, not verbatim, but he quoted Churchill. He said, so many ask so much from so few. That was unbelievable. What he's saying there is stay home basically um but yeah that's pretty much all i wanted to say i'm conscious of your time i'm conscious that you can't speak back i'd love to hear what you think though and there's a load of information out there there's tons of resources you can find about mental health and how to look after yourself i feel my responsibility now is to one, provide yoga classes, physical movement, breathing. 
and then eventually to provide um, more advice uh, in terms of business, social. And I do plan to start doing podcasts again when I can actually meet someone. <laughs> you know, when uh, unless we take this into Zoom or Skype podcasting, which is not an area I really want to go down too much because it's better than nothing, maybe. But I think a lot is lost when you do these video conferencing calls. But we'll see. We have to do the best with what we're given. Um, another actual big upside before I go is we really idolize celebrities. We, like the Oscars, who gives it? Who cares about the Oscars? It's so ridiculous when you actually look at it. I mean, I, I like a film as much as the next person, but they, they get dressed up in their tuxedos and all that stuff. And we really adore, you know, um, The Only Way is Essex and you know, Made in Chelsea. Yeah, those, those type of programs. Some, some especially younger people, um, think these people are important. But now we're going to realise that doctors, nurses, people on the front line are really important, are saving lives. So... Maybe from a society point of view, this could have an upshot in that respect. We start to realise what's important in life. And I t tell you, um, you know, my mum and my dad and my sister, um, I, I don't know what, what's going to happen. So it's, it's, it's really frightening. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't get, want to get on my moral high horse. But um, please stay home. Please, even if you don't have symptoms, we don't understand. I don't think we understand enough about this virus yet. You know, supposedly you can ha have no symptoms at all and still have an infection. Our our system, our care system, isn't ready for this for this spike of um, of uh, what do you call it? People going into hospital. We're not ready for that. So think of them and just stay at home. I mean, get out for some sunshine if you're allowed, but stay two metres away from people. I don't know what the hell the UK are playing at. Ob Boris is obviously getting his act together about now. Um, but, you see, they went for the whole herd immunity strategy, essentially saying if most of the population get this, then some will die, you know, just a handful, but at least we'll be immune. Basically saying, like, we can... Th thinking of it almost like an economical problem, uh, which to me sounds inhumane i'm from the uk i'm from london and i don't give i mean i had loads of stuff planned this year weddings and all this jazz and i cancelled all of that i don't give a shit about i'm oh, sorry it just keeps swearing but um i don't give i don't care about all of that what i do care about is will i ever see some of my friends again will i see their parents again people i grew up with and um will people be left without parents without grandparents and uh are oh, the uk I, I, as i said it's March 17th, no it's not, it's March 19th, 2020. If you're looking at this again from the future and you're in the UK, I, I dread to think how that pans out for the UK. I hope to God or whoever's up there that um, I'm I'm completely overreacting and be, make, being way too, too dramatic about this. Um, yeah, I haven't really got anything else to say. <laughs> um... As I said, I made some notes because I think this is really important. Yeah, that's it. I'm done. So, yeah. So, in a nutshell, I won't waste any more of your time. Call your mum if you have one. Call your dad if you have one. Call someone you love and tell them that you love them. Um, if you're living with someone, give them a hug, give them a kiss, reassure them. If you're living with people around you or there's people around you that you know find this really tough, can you be strong for them? You know, put on a not I'm not saying put on a brave face, but as the British will say, a stiff upper lip. Because there's some things in life, variables we can't control. But what we can control is how we respond to them. This is when we need yoga or spirit or determination more than ever. So listen, thank you. 
uh, if you enjoy this, you know, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. And um, I hope I can <coughs> still bring some value. And uh, there's been a lot of change for me. Uh, and I'll make sure to keep you all updated. Yeah, if you listened this far or watched, thanks a lot. <laughs>